Hello, I'm Chef Marcus Burek. Today what we are going to do is we are going to teach you how to make a bisque. You ask yourself, what is a bisque? It is a type of soup that is pureed. Usually you'll go to restaurants and you'll see seafood bisque. That is traditionally how it started to be made, but now there's so many variations on bisques. There's vegetable bisques, chicken bisques, all kinds of different bisques and soups, but today we're gonna to make a bisque and it is going to be a tomato basil bisque. It is absolutely delicious. What we're going to do to start with is we're gonna get all of our mise en place together. As you remember in the last show, that's what we talked about is getting all the mise en place together. So what we're going to do is we're gonna start chopping our tomatoes and our basil and you could rough chop these because like I said before, a bisque is pureed, so we're gonna puree all this so that the cuts do not have to be uniformed or neat because you're not gonna see them in the soup. All right, so I'm going to just finish off my mise en place. As you can see here, I have my mise en place. I have a tomato broth that I made. I have some onions, tomatoes, a little bit of sherry, heavy cream, salt, pepper, a little bit of oil, and fresh basil. So I am going to just show you basically what a rough chop is. That is all a rough chop is. You could even that's a rough chop. That's good. Can do all that. Make sure on your tomatoes you do take out the green part here. Uh, if you do get a clean uh, break like that with the core, you could use this. These are nice, soft tomatoes, very ripe. So you can use a little bit of that core if it is in there. If you do see a lot of the green part of the core, core the tomato and take that out. Okay. With our tomato, I'm going to just dice these real quick and if you go to our segment that shows you how to use a chef's knife and how do you make proper cuts with a chef's knife you can see how we did that quick dice on there okay now you can see we have all of our mise en place together this is what makes it so easy what I like to do Take a sheet pan. I put all my sheet pan, all my mise en place on the sheet pan, and then you could just transport this right to your stove. Nice and simple. A little bit of olive oil, your salt, and your pepper. Now you can leave it right there on your cutting board. My stove is right behind me, but I just wanted to show you this so you know this can be transported very easy. So I'm going to take this, place this right back here, right next to my pot that we have here that will start our cooking process. To make a bisque is very, very easy, but I want to teach you the, not the recipe behind it, but the technique behind it. This way you can make any bisque or soup that you would like. So first off, what I would like to want to do is put a little bit of fat in my pan. So I'm going to add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, and I'm going to add just a little bit of butter to that. I'm going to melt that down. Now if you want to thicken your soup or your bisque with a roux, you can revert back to the old video that we had a couple weeks ago or whenever you watched it on how to make a roux. This is where you would add the flour and with a bisque like this what you'd want to do is make a pale roux. Next I'm going to add my onions. I'm going to let those saute just a little bit. I want them translucent. I want to coat them in the fat. Now the way we're going to thicken this bisque today, your friends are going to love you for it because it's super cool. Every time I tell all my clients about how to thicken the soup like this, they're like, I've never heard of that. But what we're, how we're going to thicken it today is with bread. Some of the bread that we had left over from an event we had, I'm going to take that and I usually save it in my freezer. I could take it out for soups like this and then add it and then we'll puree it with everything else and it's going to thicken the soup and it gives it a wonderful flavor. And I'll add that in just a little bit. So we'll let these cook for about another two minutes and then we're going to add our tomatoes. The reason I don't want to add my tomatoes too soon is because the tomatoes have a lot of liquid to it and I wouldn't get 
the sweating that I want with just these onions with that. I would more or less be boiling the onions than I would be just sweating them. And when you're doing this with any kind of soup, you want to, you could add your onions. You want to add the things that are harder. Let's say you're, you're adding carrots, uh, peppers, things um, that are a little bit harder. It will take a little bit longer to saute, to soften a little bit. You want to add those first. You don't want to add, let's say if you're doing a crab meat um, or shrimp to add that first because by the time you're done cooking your soup, your shrimp and your crab meat are going to be so overcooked it'll be like shoe leather. So you want to make sure that you cook everything in an order. So what I'm doing is the onions. Now that those are softened and a little translucent, I'm going to add my tomatoes. Mix, the, mix these all together. And let that cook. Now what I want to do is add a little bit of my salt, a little bit of my pepper. And what I'm going to do is start layering my flavors. I don't want to pour all my salt in there and all the pepper that I'm going to use because it will be too much. You need to constantly keep testing your soup and then slowly adding your flavors to it because once the tomatoes cook, they're going to release flavor. The onions cook and they're going to release flavor. Basil in it is going to release flavor. So all these flavors are going to marry. Now one of the biggest things I always tell all my clients when we're doing cooking classes and things like that for them is that you want to make your soup, if you can, a day in advance. Soup always is better the next day. All your flavors have a chance to marry together. Whatever it is, um, they'll have that chance to marry together and combine and make that complex flavor that you're probably going for. Okay, as you can see here, a lot of the juices are releasing from these tomatoes and this is why I didn't want it to do saute my tomatoes with my onions because then I would have been boiling my onions. I'm going to let that cook just probably about another three or four minutes. I really want to get those tomatoes to stew down just a little bit. Okay, now that these tomatoes are cooked down a little bit, I'm going to add my sherry. I like to add a little bit of sherry to mine. I've worked with many chefs that have, they add all, I've had a chef that added marsala, I had one that added brandy, um, one that added red wine, one that added white wine. You could add anything you want and that's what I'm doing with all these videos that I'm showing you. I want you to learn how to cook. That's why I'm not really telling you I'm putting in two cups of onions or one cup of tomato. I'm not concerned about the recipe right now. We have the recipe. If you wanted to get this recipe online as well, just click on the recipe section and you can look at the recipe, actually what I'm doing right here. But what I want to teach you right now is how to make this soup. And I want you to make it your own. You might want to add red wine, you might want to add marsala or something else. You might have found a liquor that no one knows about or some kind of something that no one knows about. Add it to it. Make it your own. Don't, uh, what I call as a recipe chef. Break away from that a little bit. I, I, what I do when I have recipes is I just look at the recipe. I don't really follow it. 